So we're here, another episode, ranking every season's episode from worst to best. Hi everyone, it is Peter Sam the Narrow Gauge Engine here, and today on the chopping block it is season 6, of course. Season 6 is a very nostalgic season for me, and it's just class. It's different to the uh, previous five seasons, but I don't think that makes it bad at all. I think it's just different good. Anyway, let's go to number 26. So in number 26 is a bad day for Harold the helicopter. Season 6, can we just talk for a minute? What were you thinking? Harold's crash is great and all, but like... The rest of the episode is just a bit naff, if I'm honest. I never really took to this episode, it's just everybody hating each other. Percy hates Harold, Harold hates Percy, everybody hates each other. But let's move on to number 25. And in number 25 is James and the Red Balloon. This episode is literally devoid of all logic. James is angry at a balloon for stealing his passengers when it's literally like the smallest hot air balloon ever. It could carry like five people. I don't understand the logic here. I mean, other than that, the episode was all right. It was better than A Bad Day for Harold the Helicopter. But let's move on to number 24. Now in number 24 is Middle Engine. The episode has a good concept that is executed well. And you know what, that scene where Percy's getting pushed onto the loading ramp, that's great. Although, like with Percy Runs Away back in season one, that is one problem I have with this. Why does Percy get blamed for something that Henry did? It's just wrong called blame, and it's annoying as well. Don't get me wrong, I like the episode, but, you know, that, that bit just annoys me. Let's move on to number 23. Sorry, number 23 is Edward the Very Useful Engine. This is an episode that, like, tries to defend Edward. It shows newcomers to the series that, like, you know, Edward is important, but I think, I think they've highlighted why Edward's important for the wrong reasons. Being a back engine isn't what prioritises Edward. It's the fact he's so determined. So, such a good, reliable engine. Not because he helped Gordon up a hill once. Although it is amusing to see Edward push Duck's train and Gordon's train up a hill. Nevertheless, it's another good ending as well, and it's a pretty good episode overall. So let's move on to number 22. Now in number 22 is Thomas, Percy and the Squeak. Alicia Botti's scream is quite possibly the worst thing I've ever endured, but I like how Alicia chooses to ride in Percy instead of Thomas. But the best part of this episode has to be the ending when the uh, the mouse stays at Tipmus Sheds. But let's move on to number 21. Sorry, number 21 is No Sleep for Cranky. This episode is an explanation as to why Cranky is so cranky. It's very fun to see how Cranky deals with being trapped with Salty and his tails. And the episode just gets better when Harvey arrives to hell. All in all, I think this episode is pretty alright. So let's move on to number 20. Now number 20 is It's Only Snuff. Every part of this episode I liked apart from one bit. And that bit's the end ending where Sir Topham Hat says, oh, you've wrecked your snow pile, so, you know, screw it. You can just not wear one. This episode should teach the viewers to be tolerant, not teach them to, you know, oh, you don't have to put up with it if you don't want to. But apart from that, I really liked the episode. The, uh, the crash into the water tank was great. So yeah, let's move on to number 19. In number 19 is Harvey to the rescue. I like Harvey. He's very unique. He has this really like differing factor to him he proves his worth as well which i think is really good and this episode is really all about accepting others and i really like it for that however we never see harvey again really as having his own episode so that's why it's really down this low but let's move on to number 18 in number 18 is elizabeth the vintage lorry elizabeth is a great character she's not afraid to put her foot down she's also reliable and actually gives the fat controller a bit more depth and a bit more character and the ending where elizabeth is revealed to be the fat controller's first lorry is great so let's move on to number 17 in number 17 is toby had a little lamb this episode is really just about proving toby's worth as he helped the lambs despite the heavy snow I don't think much else can be said about this episode other than I just think it's alright. Another great ending though, and let's move on to number 16. Next up in number 16, we have Scaredy Engines. This is another one of those episodes where, the, you know, an engine is spooked by something that turns out to be nothing. It's been done to death in season 5, and it's still been done multiple times in this season. And it's at its weakest in this episode. I like the second half of this episode, but not, the first half is a bit meh. But I love Thomas's reaction to feeling the chains against him. As well as Percy comforting Thomas in the end. But let's move on to number 15. In number 15 is Salty's Secret. I've got to say, Salty is the best 
best season six new character, hands down. Despite wanting to be beside the sea, Salty still does work his hardest at the quarry. And because of that, in the end, he gets to be beside the sea at Brendam Docks. It's such a sweet, happy ending, and it's nice to see Salty's wish be fulfilled. But let's move on to number 14. And in number 14 is Twin Trouble. Donald and Douglas separating as a concept is great. Although I would prefer it if both twins had someone else to spend their time with, not just Donald. But if anything, I think this episode proves that the twins have an unbreakable bond and that they could never ever fall out. But let's move on to number 13. And in number 13 is Percy and the Haunted Mine. Honestly, if I hadn't known that this was a season 6 episode, you gave me the episode and said, what season do you think this is from? I would have said season 5. It's just so eerie in its like setting and the way the buildings drop as well. I also like how Percy gets it into his head that the gnomes in the vans are the ones causing the buildings to drop when they're actually just garden gnomes. Just all all in all, a really good episode, and let's move on to number 12. In number 12 is Buffer Bother. I love the concept that one twin is jealous of the other, it's just great. And you can see Bill get more agitated as time goes on. The crash at the end is decent, and so is that pipe that falls off the roof on into uh, Bill's funnel. Just all in all, a great episode, so let's move on to number 11. In number 11 is Gordon Takes a Tumble. This episode is home to the best crash in the series, and I will fight anyone that says any different. According to rob the green engine it takes 31 seconds for that crash or something like that the crash just makes this episode for me and yeah that's why it's here at number 11 so let's move on to our top 10 before we get to our top 10 can i just ask you like subscribe all that juicy stuff it helps me make videos like this and shows me your support for this channel and i love every one of you that view like subscribe all that but let's move on to number 10 and in number 10 is the world's strongest engine this episode is just improving upon that scene, that one scene from Pop Goes the Diesel, you know what scene I'm talking about. Except this time, Diesel falls into a barge, and then Henry arriving at the end is just the cherry on the cake. All in all, this episode's so funny, it's great, it's a good laugh. But let's move on to number nine. And in number nine is The Fogman. I love the moral of this episode, which is you don't always have to rely on technology. I also love Thomas's crash. Just everything about this episode is great, apart from that far corn, which is just bloody annoying. But anyway, let's move on to number eight. In number eight is Jack Jumps In. This episode is all about introducing us to the pack. And honestly, every character seems fleshed out and really interesting. Jack's crash, where he tips over the slope, is really cool i love it and max's face when he spins around like a tokyo drift character oh my god it's the scariest thing ever i was mentally traumatized from that his face is scary but anyway let's move on to number seven and in number seven is duncan duncan another episode in season six with a great crash just like gordon takes a tumble but the reason i put this one higher is because i feel like it has more of a story i also think it has more of an interesting moral which is like don't rush your work. I just love this episode and it's always nice to see recreations of it. But anyway, let's move on to number six. And in number six is Rusty Saves the Day. Rusty in this episode is so well written. He's encouraging, kind, thoughtful, and Elizabeth returning to help uh, repair the old line is just a great way to reuse her. Although I can't help but think that, you know, this episode should have been called Elizabeth and Rusty save the day instead of Rusty saves the day, but you know, it's whatever. Let's move on to our top five. In number five is Jack Frost. Yes, this is another episode where an engine is scared by a thing they didn't think existed, but it just turns out to be one of the protagonists. I think Jack Frost does it beautifully. I love James's reaction, and I think that, like, the ice on Percy is just beautiful. It's just beautiful, like, decoration to him. But what makes this for me is the ending where James is boasting, and obviously Percy uh knows what happened so he's like oh yeah sure this is just class this is top tier some good season six but let's move on to number four and in our number four spot is faulty whistles all right i know what you're thinking well this is just mike's whistle from the railway series but with duncan and you'd be absolutely right to say that but like you know the <laughs> The creators didn't have enough money to make a whole Arsdale Railway just for that one episode, so they just made Duncan 
be Mike, wouldn't you, if you didn't have the budget? And plus, I think it's better with the organ rather than the people screaming. And I think the ending was much better, if I'm honest. So that's why it sits here at number four. So let's move on to number three. So in number three is Thomas the Jet Engine. I personally think that Thomas occasionally should be allowed to be silly like this. It shouldn't be outright childish like with CGI and what they do well, well what they did but we get some amazing narration here and some of the funniest lines ever i'll let you have some want to race thomas beat bertie never mind hi gordon bye gordon so let's move on to second place and in second place is a friend in need this is the episode where jack finally feels he belongs in the pack and where he saves thomas by holding up that bridge and damaging his arms in the process his commitment is astounding and the episode is just great in general also i like ned too so you know there's that but anyway let's move on to first place and i think we all know what's coming and in number one we all know it's coming it's percy's chocolate crunch i'll simplify the reason that I like this one into three like I did before. Number one is Percy's attempts at trying to keep clean but it's just like not happening. Even though that's James's kind of thing I think other engines deserve to you know try and keep clean as well. Number two is the crash. It's just amazing to see the windows just flying out with chocolate everywhere and Percy's line oh I've never been this dirty it's just great it's just great. And then my third reason is the ending where everyone calls Percy chocolate themed names. I'll give you the clip. You look Good enough to eat, Thomas hooted. Pudding, Percy, teased James. Chalk ice on wheels, chipped in Henry. Disgraceful, said Gordon pompously. So yeah, that's a wrap with season six. I'm hoping to get season seven out soon. Don't worry, that'll be coming. As well as a new episode for Tales from the Railway. I'm also planning on doing a ranking every episode from the pack series uh, video, if you want to see that. But yeah, that's it from me. Uh, have a good one and goodbye.